Okay, I'm going to read a poem called The Ballad of Fawny of Fulton. The only thing you might need to know about this poem is the word Grendel refers to uh, the monster in an old English poem called Beowulf. One. <clears throat> These days the world has come asunder. You have to wonder what the fuck is going on. Truth thrown under the wheels of alternate facts by authoritarian gas bags whose fawning legion of mopes will suck up any racist shit pours from Grendel Prez Dope's pie hole and use it to attack whatever system, democracy be damned, interferes with their God-given right to have everything, every fucking thing. And don't think for a minute that includes you, dink, because it doesn't, unless you are already rich and white, the proof of God's blessing. Whereas those who aren't, despised by God, don't, as is written in flames, carried by men in white sheets through the smoky, burning streets of America, where a crumpled black man rides under the knee of the one who swore to serve and protect the sorry chump he now renders defunct. Two. Grendel Prez Dope ruled the land through fluke and deception, alternate facts being his mode of explaining his lies to the mooks who hung on his every crooked word and waved terror in his name with their burning torches and their figurative white sheets in the night. When the people rose and said enough and picked old Joe to run the place, the rabid dope raged. This is a joke, he roared. He screamed, he howled and snorted some coke, beat his chest and scowled till Purple Mountain's majesty fled in distress, ran for cover lest the orange dope corner her in a dressing room, waving his little apologies in advance. Stubby mushroom dick. He whined and drooled over dreams of Vlad's perfect power. With that iron ruski fisk, he could smash Joe to bits and find a quick way back to his Oval Office scam with some help from the thugs he'd told to stand by ready to attack the Republic and die on his order, though not his example, just so he could jack the people's choice just find me a few lost ballots, he ordered the Georgia hacks, only 11,780, along with a few fake electors, to seal the deal, but they balked in the light of day. So he went on his nasty way, summoned his dark forces from the nether regions, Rudy, Powell, and Eastman, Flynn, Lindell, and Stone, rose up to his spell, a dark pestilent cloud, a thriving swarm of confusion and lies spread corruption over the land, breeding perpetual strife to mask the slight of hand that would see him victorious, crowned king of uh, uh, Prez once again. Three. Then a fighter arose in the east, whose origins some say were lost in the mists of mythic time, though others insist she was bred and nurtured in a bend of panthers, warriors of old who prowled the land, defended with force the abused and downtrodden, and of course fed hungry kids breakfast before school. Armed at Emory and Howard, Fawny of Fulton, Skyon of Black Power, rose up and cried out, Enough of this nonsense. You can't just find votes. You've crossed a line I cannot allow. The law is the law for high and for low, which means Grendel Perez, too. So prepare to go toe to toe, jerk. Gird your small loins and keep that wise rhyme in your crooked little mind. Don't do the crime if you can't. Do the time, hun. Fawny of Fulton called grand juries galore. They came at her bid, and together they swore to find truth. 
So they queried and questioned, they pried and they probed. Giuliani, Cipollone, Loeffler, and Graham were summoned before them to answer demands for the truth, while the orange-tinted dope and his legion of fans stomped petulant feet, screamed insults, curses, maledictions, and worse, accused Fanny of witch hunts. Hey, leave us out of it, the witches replied, were on her side, and generally did ugly shit as expected. Fearless before their taunts and threats, Fanny of Fulton stood her ground, held high the sword of justice, strong and sharp as a whip crack at dawn. Other lawyers gathered proof of the dope's many crimes, sticking his little shroom where it wasn't welcome, stealing top secret files and trying to hide them in the bathroom. Oh yeah, and trying to steal an election, but were stymied and stalled at the starting line by claims any charges would be political persecution. Nya, 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 Grendel Prez taunted from his desolate Florida swamp. You can't touch me, and if you try, my Myrmidon thugs are ready to bust into Congress or wherever, proud losers all, and do my worst and fuck you up. Undaunted Fawny forged ahead in the name of democracy's honor. Bring it on, doofus, she calmly said. I won't be stopped by your lies and slanders, nor frightened by threats. It's obvious to anyone who can see that you're just a crook, plain and simple. Go ahead. Call me names. Bully me to your tiny heart's content. It won't change the fact that you're just an orange pimple on racist America's sorry white ass. Four. Indictments fell to the left and the right, even as Grendel Prez shouted threat after threat to unleash his trolls on all who stood against his plot to seize power and punish those who refused to cower before the mighty orange boss. Your lousy indictments, he bellowed, will bounce off my iron pecs. They won't mean shit when I sit once again in my perfect oval office and pardon and pardon and pardon my poor, persecuted, perfect self. Prepare for payback, as once I am there, I will shower you with the wrath of the Donalds. Quack on, Donnie, Fanny of Fulton shot back. You can't duck this one no matter what tack your crooked cronies take with their lies and distortions. We're on your case, and we ain't looking back. <sighs> Grendel Press whined his annoying orange whine, gnashed his teeth, beat his chest with his little clenched fist, bleated fake outrage to milk his poor mopes for more bucks, which rolled in to his shuck and jive, once again proving old Phineas T. to be America's greatest philosopher. To further fun, endless adjustments to his complex orange dew, pay a few legal bills, and stage another coup in the name of wealthy white victims everywhere. Fanny sharpened her gleaming blade, checked each angle, put the non-alternate facts all on display till the work is accomplished, she finally weighed in. We're ready to go, and oh, by the way, you should know, Grendel Prez, we're not the feds. So wherever you go to plant your prodigious rear, be it oval office chair or a bunk in a cell, no pardon applies to our work, you dig? And oh, you can tell your crew of co-crooks were coming for them too. They've harassed our poll workers, forced good, honest people to hide from your thugs, threatened officials, tried to pass fake electors, broke into voting machines and lied under oath. So I've recoed your pasty ass and all your pasty ass friends too. Now the whole racket's exposed for the world to see a vast web of deceit, manipulation, and crime organized by you to rob the people of their democratic choice. I've seen some bad losers in my time, but hon, you take the cake. Five. 
I wish I could tell you, dear friend, how the combat resolved and what end was reached now that judges and lawyers are marshaled and formed into broad, long phalanxes and the hills echo with battle horns call to arms as crowds of spectators hoot and holler and the pall of violence reeks in the air, but I can't, as the time has come to close this rhyme as dictated by the ephemeral gods of measure.